What's up everyone, Philip here with IGN and today I'm joined with Jonathan Dornbush, IGN's news editor and today we're going to be talking about Nintendo's massive success with indie releases on Switch in 2017 and what indie releases we're looking forward to in 2018. Yeah, so uh, we actually got to speak to uh, Nintendo of America's Kirk Scott. Uh, he works sort of in the business development, uh, specifically with Nindies, and that's sort of his focus there. And we talked a lot about how sort of surprising, I think, for some of us that oh, yeah. success was in 2017. But he's, he sort of mentioned for them, they were reaching out to devs and they knew when they had a good game, and that's when they would promote something. Sort of like with Golf Story. I think that caught us by surprise for sure. Yeah. It did for me at least. Yeah, definitely. That was one of those games that was just totally under my radar. Um, and then up until maybe two or three weeks before release was when things really started blowing up about it. And um, that's when I started really gaining a lot of interest in how amazing that story started to develop once you played that game and, yeah. and really like invested in those characters so yeah and, and Kirk sort of talked about how they saw how well that game was doing in development and how they were using HD rumble to work so well with sort of the golf mechanics and they were like we got to promote this game going into its launch and that's sort of why I think it picked up for a lot of us when it showed up in one of the Nintendo directs I believe it was and so he talked a lot about those sort of surprise game successes, but also looking ahead to 2018 of what they hope will be some even bigger successes. Yeah. Uh, and we actually exclusively confirmed at IGN that Aegis Defenders and Dead Cells are both coming to Switch this year. Yes. Oh my god. Dead Cells, aka Dark Cells. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. That, um, an early access hit on Steam, which is beloved by a lot of players, is going to come to Switch. And when it releases on Switch, it will release day and date as the 1.0 launch with the PC launch. Awesome. So it'll be sort of the fully featured game, but uh, the devs told us at Motion Twin, they are gonna keep uh, developing it. It's not gonna end at 1.0. They are gonna keep working on it as they have been in early access. Awesome, so the Switch version is getting full post-launch support. Yes. Just like the yeah. PC version. Yeah. And you had mentioned also Aegis Defenders. Yes, which is this really cool, it's sort of a 16-pit game, which the, uh, the developers said they were inspired by the Super Nintendo. That was sort of their big thing for them. Uh, but it's this cool mix of, it's sort of like a 2D side-scroller with tower defense mechanics in it. And it's this really awesome, beautiful game, and they mentioned, I love sort of, they discussed their inspiration, and one of them was Persona, in that they loved how people really attached themselves to the little narratives of individual characters in that game, and so they've integrated more fully formed stories for the characters in the game itself, with sort of branching dialogue. They won't change the game, but give you different flavors of who those characters are. Right. And then it also has this really cool tower defense mechanic that you can play with just one Joy-Con per person, co-op locally. Uh, and so they really wanted to make that a big emphasis on the system, which uh, Kirk kind of talked to us about how that was important for most of these Switch and indie titles, was making sure they were the great games in themselves, but took advantage of the hardware too. And that's why you saw the platform as such a great space for this. Right. Uh, which is really fascinating because they said, for them, you know, they someone goes on the eShop, it's not just about seeing the new Mario or Zelda game. They want them to see these games as just an important part of the Switch library. Yeah. Uh, which is a really great thing to see. And I think that was true in 2017, and I think we're gonna see even more of that in 2018. I feel you feel probably the same way about oh, yeah. that. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, as you know, as we get deeper into 2018, the lineup of indie releases and first party releases from Nintendo just keeps getting better and better. So so I'm very excited. I was very happy with what we saw in 2017 yeah. for the Nindies and indie releases on Switch. But in particular, 2018 is already very exciting with games like Celeste coming yes. out and yeah. you know Super Meat Boy, stuff like that. It's yeah. very, very cool. And so. then we have uh, Faye coming also soon, which we spoke to the devs about that. And right. they're also working on Flipping Death. Uh, which is also coming to Switch. That was revealed at the first Nindie Showcase last year, back in February. And we did talk to Kirk about sort of, hey, there are some games from that showcase that haven't come out yet. And he said, you know, the reality of it is, like, we're excited about these games. We want the indie devs to bring them out as soon as they can, but they don't want to rush them. It's the same sort of mentality Nintendo has always had about we're not going to rush a game out to launch. Right. If it's not ready, it's not ready. And if this is an indie dev's opus, he said, you know, we're not going to force them to release it early. He said sort of, if Stardew Valley had released years before it was supposed to, would it have been the same game everyone loved. Right. And it's a massive success on Switch. So that, it makes a lot of sense. But yeah. unfortunately, some of those release dates slip. It's just the reality of development. But I think we're going to get a lot of huge hits this year. I'm really excited about that. Totally. Me too. All right. Well, you heard it here first on IGN. Thank you very much, Jonathan. And for everything else Nintendo and indies and nindies, keep it here on IGN.